Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter with WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and it's your Mayhem Minute for April 24th, 2015. Let's talk about the ladies, but before that, please check out our friends SliceOnBroadway.com and BoldPittsburgh.com, two great uh, sites that are supporting us. Um, well, one, an actual location, a pizza place with Slice on Broadway, helping us out every Tuesday night and feeding our guests that come in here to Mayhem Studios. So let's get into it. The Divas. A few weeks ago, we had hashtag give Divas a chance. We had a lot of fun talking about AJ Lee retiring, uh, including uh, uh, women's wrestler champion uh, Sarah Feeney joining us a couple episodes ago on the Wrestling Mayhem show to talk about that as uh, somebody from that perspective. Uh, today, uh, what caught my eye was this article by Nick Paglino. I should probably learn his name because he ends up being the guy I, I pull an article from here, uh, him and Mr. Labar. And uh, over at WrestleZone.com, a uh, former creative writer blogs on how WWE perceives the Divas division. And I guess he's a more recent leaving on, on something like this. And this is what he says, quote, uh, During my time WWE Creative, we actually were told that there were really no baby faces or heels in the Divas division. Sometimes uh, some of my colleagues like mine, Mike and uh, Eamon would bitch about consistently, by the way. Uh, he says, back to this, It was strongly implied that Divas were all just a bunch of catty chicks, most of whom were mentally unstable. And it uh, goes into being a perfect example of this philosophy was the booking of the program between AJ and Paige last year. Instead of establishing babyface and heel, both characters acted kind of heelish. Their frenemies angle was sort of confusing, more confusing than compelling. Thus, the rivalry uh, between one of the most over divas of all time and the newcomer uh, just wasn't as good as it should have been. And I agree for the most part there. It was awkward, but it was a little different, but it never caught wind of anything. And, and I don't know what this philosophy comes from. You know, you think people in WWE... They should know better, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I say this with a grain of salt that I don't know how booking works. I don't know how great it is. Um, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, I don't know. It, it, it's, 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 it's lost on me a little bit when, when they decide to kind of go off of a uh, formula here a little bit. I understand the experiment and maybe that's what this was for a bit. Um, but also explains why, why they were just little segments, you know, why, all, you know, and I guess we're, we're still kind of seeing this a little bit because we have, um, uh, was Naomi and, uh, and, uh, the Bellas going at it now and nobody's really likable right now. Um, and, and, and you kind of wonder why that is. So what do you think of this? What do you think of the odd bookings of the, uh, divas, uh, in this era of WWE, uh, should they just kind of go back to basics? Like, it seems like we still do on NXT. Just watched the tremendous three-way match last night for the number one contendership with uh, uh, Charlotte uh, and, and, and Becky Lynch and, uh, and uh, Bayley. You know, um, and that's doing tremendous and, and they're more established there. You know, we know where every girl is coming from in that situation, you know, and then are debuting new ones, which we have an opinion one way or another about everybody cheers for blue pants. For instance, let me know uh, on the comments to this video on Twitter, anything like that. And we'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.